right, folks. So continuing with lesson 4.4, we are going to look at the big culminating type of problem where we actually make a line of fit for a scatter plot. So when you're looking at a scatter plot that has a positive or a negative correlation, you can model the trend of the data using a line of fit. So what's a line of fit? It's just any line that you draw on a scatter plot that's close to most of the points. So is there more than one line of fit you could draw for a scatter plot? Yeah. Um, but they'll they should be kind of close to each other, right? Um, the lines that, like the different lines that you could draw, the different lines of fit, um, depending on the scatter plot. So here are the steps. Step O Juan, make a scatter plot of the data. Step a two, decide if that is modeled by a line. So whether it has, see if it has like a positive or a negative correlation. Step three, draw a line that appears to fit the data closely. So this is not like an exact thing yet. We're just drawing one, kind of eyeballing it. And you want to try to get about as many points above the line as below it. And then step four, we're going to pick two points from that line. That The points just have to be on the line. They don't have to be actual data points from the scatter plot, but they have to be on the line. So you pick two points and then we can do um, use the find the slope and then use y equals mx to b to what mx plus b to um, get the equation for that line. So <clears throat> let's see how we do that. So here we have um, the weekly sales of a DVD. If you don't know what that is, they're these round plastic discs that we used to watch movies on back in the old days. Um, so the weekly sales of a DVD and the number of weeks since its release, write an equation that models the DVD sales as a function of the number of weeks since its release. Then interpret uh, the slope and the y-intercept of the line of fit. Okay, so step one is make a scatter plot of the data. Okay, so we need to put some uh, mark markings on our graph. We need to number the uh, axes. So for the x values, uh, they range from one to eight. So I'll just number those babies. So say so that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then our sales in millions uh, ranges from like five up to 19. Let's see. Uh, if we were to make each one of these worth two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, that would do it for us. Okay, so these are millions, and then these are weeks. Okay, so week one, sales was uh, 19 million. Let's switch colors from my, from my dots. So week one was 19 million. So there's that point, one comma 19. Week two, sales are at 15 million. So about there. Uh, week three, sales were at 13 million. Week four, sales were 11 million. Week five, sales were at 10 million. Week six, sales were at 8 million. Week seven, sales were at 7 million. 
And then week eight, sales are at five million. Okay. Now, what you will do is if you're doing this on paper, is you'll get a ruler and like just draw a line that goes through those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have to get a little line tool. I'm going to make my line using a line tool. Well, it's just a line. Make the line first and then I'll adjust it over there. Da, da. So you try to get as many dots above the line as below the line. The one above, I need to move it down a little bit. So it looks like this point up here is like a little bit further away from the rest of the trend. So if I put my line down here a little bit more, let's see, now I have one, two. You're not presenting. I'm not presenting. Thanks a lot, Google meet how about now no yeah yeah okay So I have, um, you just kind of like adjust your ruler to, to where you feel like you get enough. You have like about the same amount of points above the line as below the line. And then the points that are on the line, you can just um, kind of, um, those just don't count as above or below, right? So we got above the line, we have one, two, three. Below the line, we have one, two. But that looks pretty okay. Maybe if I move it just a tiny bit. But I think that is a pretty good um, a pretty good line of fit. It seems to fit the data pretty well. So I'm going to make that be my line. I'm going to go back into the slideshow. Okay. So we am I still presenting? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So now we, if we look at the steps, um, we made the scatter plot. It was pretty clear that it could be modeled by a line. Then we drew the line. We tried to draw it with as many points above as below. And now for the last part, we're gonna write an equation using two points on that line, okay? Now those points don't have to be actual data pairs. They could be, but they don't have to be. But they have to be on the line of fit. So looking back at our line of fit, <clears throat> um, I'll show you like we can use, I'm gonna change color for the points that I'm gonna use, I'll use green. So for what, one thing is you don't wanna try to pick points that are really close to each other because that's gonna, um, you get a, you ha it's easier to get more error on your slope if you pick points that are really close to each other. So what I try to do is I try to pick a point that's like sort of on a grid line so like right here, I can tell like the coordinates of that point would be nine comma three. Actually, let me write that on the graph. All right, so for this point, the X value would be nine, the Y value would be three. And I'm picking it just because it's a point on my line and it's kind of far to one side. Then I'm gonna try to pick a, pick a point on the other side that is um, close to a, um, like an actual grid point. Um, so I think I'm just gonna use this point right here because it looks like our line kind of goes through that point and that point is two comma 15. So it's okay to use one of the data points, but you don't have to use data points. You want to use points that are kind of far away from each other because the further away your points get, the more accurate your slope is. So in order to find the equation of this line, first we need to find the slope. Because remember, we want it to be y 
equals mx plus b. Um, so what we're going to do is first find the slope. So slope, if you remember, rise over run. So um, subtract the y values that gives you the rise. Subtracting the x values gives you the run. <clears throat> um, not to be confused with giving you the runs, which is completely different. Okay, so we just need to kind of um, label these guys. So I'll say your x1, y1, and your x2, y2. Okay, so now y2 minus y1 is going to be 3 minus 15. And then x2 is 9, so we're going to be doing 9 minus 2 on the bottom. Okay, 3 minus 15, that's uh, negative 12. 9 minus 2 is seven. So my slope, I get negative 12 over seven. Um, we can on these, we can, um, we can write, we can write these ones as a decimal if we want to, if the fraction is wacky sometimes. Um, so I'm going to write this one as I'm just going to, because we're getting an approximate slope here. This, this line right here is an approximation of the data. So we can get a decimal for our slope. We don't have to have this exact negative 12 over seven. So I can get a calculator and do 12 divided by seven is about 1.7. So I'm just gonna round it to 1.7 for now. I'll maybe 1.71 just for funsies. So that was negative. So our slope is approximately negative 1.71. So what does that mean when we say interpret the slope? So when we interpret this slope, I'll do my interpretation in red. So the slope means it goes down, that the y value goes down by 1.71 whenever the x value goes up by one. So when we go, when we go um, to the right one, when we run one, our rise is negative 1.17. So what does that mean in terms of what the X and Y stand for? That means every week that goes by, so when X increases by one, that means a week went by, right? So every week, that's like when X goes up by one, So what happens if, it, if the Y value goes down by negative 1.7? That means the sales, because Y is the sales. The sales go down, because it's negative, by about 1.71 million dollars. That's the interpretation of the slope. Each week, the sales go down by about 1.71 million. Now we need to um, do the last part, which is um, we need to actually find the y-intercept and get the, the whole equation, right? So right now, we have the slope, and we can pick a sample point to plug in for x and y. So we're going to plug, I'll just say, let's plug in um, x1 and y1. So let me switch colors for this, purple. So we are gonna take y equals mx plus b. But we're gonna plug in x1 and y1 and m and solve for b. Okay, so y1 was 15. M is negative 1.71, x1 is 2. So I need to multiply 2 times negative 1.71. Uh, 
that's not the button I wanted it to do. I just wanted a calculator. Okay, so we're gonna do two times 1.71. But it'll be negative. Okay, so this will be negative 3.42. Then to get B by itself, we would just add 3.42 to both sides. And we're going to get B equals. 18.42. Um, so that means, so now think about, look, look at our line. Does that look like about where the Y intercept should be? You should always kind of check. If we extend this out here, it's a little bit, it's going to hit the Y axis a little bit above 18. So that makes sense for us. So our equation is y equals the slope, negative 1.71 times x plus 18.42. So now interpreting the y-intercept of this line, um, the y-intercept happens when x is 0. So that means that, like, um, like when it first opened up, maybe that's how many they would sell. Like on the first day, maybe. Um, but it would really be like if there was a week prior to here, that would be the week's totals. It doesn't really have a good interpretation. Okay, so we, let's kind of like go back over what we did here. We started with the data. We plotted the points. We realized that it looked like pretty linear. It had a negative correlation. So we drew a line that seemed to fit the data. Then we picked two points on those on that line. And we found the slope. And then plugged into y equals mx plus b using one of those points to figure out the y intercept. And now we have the equation of our line of fit. And what's neat about this is we can use that to predict what's going to happen. Um, like in the future. So like at week 10 or week nine, um, we can just plug in a 10 or a nine and it'll tell us what the sales should be. Thanks. Y'all.